Hi, everybody. Stu, AG6AG. And you know what? Uh, I got an email from a gentleman by the name of Dennis. Uh, call sign is November 9, X-Ray Foxtrot X-Ray, asking about his FT3000 and receive filters. And it reminded me that I had swirled away a class slash talk that I gave about a year ago uh, called Using Filters to Enhance HF Reception. Uh, the reason that I never really published this is the audio was kind of funky on it. And, uh, you know, I kind of swirled it away and said, I'm going to get to this later. Well, he inspired me to go ahead and get that audio edited, and I did my best on it. I apologize if the volume drifts a little bit, but, uh, boy, the volume was so low on the remote stuff that I really needed to fix it. Anyway, with that, oh, and that reminds me, hey, um, if you like my videos and the stuff that I do, do me a favor and click on the subscribe button, and uh, if you like any particular video, please click like on it so I know I'm going in the right direction. And uh, any questions or comments, of course, make them down below in the comment section of the video that you have questions or comments about. Uh, with that, again, thanks, Dennis, for getting me off my duff here to get this done. Uh, this is Using Filters to Enhance HF Reception. Good morning and welcome to our Saturday morning radio school from May 15, 2021. And today we're going to have Stu, AG6AG, freshly over from his own famous YouTube channel, giving us a talk about HF filters and what they actually do with all those knobs on our radio that not enough of us look at. So over to you, Stu. All right. Well, let me get uh, some screen set up here. Yeah there there that is and you should see my uh, uh, front page of my presentation everybody see that yep. awesome awesome give me just a second I want to make sure I've got some different views up here there that is and let me go with this as well all right awesome so using filters to enhance our HF reception. And, you know, uh, I remember when I first got my general class license and it was pretty much, okay, I can hear this person. I'm going to talk back and see if they answer me. And uh, there were all these other really cool knobs on the uh, radio, but I really didn't understand what they did. Um, started reading up on them. But I think the most important thing I did was I started playing with them. And uh, uh, playing with them, I seem to learn a lot more than uh, I ever had, right, reading about them. So that's just kind of the way I do things. Um, and for those that don't know, my name is Stu. My call sign is AG6AG. Uh, and I'm a member of CVARC. Uh, I am the president of VCARS and uh, heavily involved in the community. So with that, you know, let's... Uh, Let's see what we can do here. Uh, why use receive filters? Well, receive filters enhance the signal of interest. So in other words, if, uh, if you're trying to pull something out that you can't quite hear or whatever, you can use receive filters to enhance that and make it a little bit easier to hear. Uh, receive filters can remove uh, noise, right? Uh, you know, either QRN or uh, can also... Uh, filter uh, uh, noise like QRM as well. So, uh, you know, you can use those filters to pull down the noise around the signal that you want. And, uh, you know, receive filters can make a big difference in what you can hear. Uh, and we're going to, I've got a couple uh, demo videos that I'll show you that shows some of the stuff that you can do with it. Um, what receive filters don't do and, uh, a receive filter cannot raise a signal above the noise floor. If the signal's at the noise floor, it's at the noise floor. And you're not going to raise it above that noise floor. Uh, it can reduce some of the man-made noises around you, but uh, atmospheric noises and things like that, a uh, regular filter that's in your radio typically can't fix that. Um, they can't eliminate general noise per se, 
Uh, you can have methods of phasing antennas and other things that usually would be external to a radio or an uh, expensive option for a radio that might be able to do some of that. Uh, by phasing the antenna, you may be able to get uh, a better quality signal. But in general, uh, you're not going to cut down your general noise. Uh, receive filters do not boost incoming signals. And, and when you talk about a receive filter, I'm not talking about an amp or a preamp, okay? I'm talking about a filter. Um, and you can't selectively, with an amp or a preamp, boost a particular portion of the signal. Um, and... Of course, you know, receive filters cannot improve your signal output because, gee, they're receive filters, right? Um, anyway, so we've got a lot of receive filters that are available to us. We've got roofing filters. Uh, we've got uh, the preamps, right? Um, or IPO when you turn those preamps off. We'll talk a little bit about that. We have attenuation filters, which basically are designed to bring everything down, all the RF levels down. Uh, auto gain control, which is designed to smooth the volume that you're hearing of the received signal. Uh, and we also, by the way, have RF gain, which is a knob that uh, most people can't really figure out what to do with on their radio. Um, we, of course, have RF width, which allows us to change the actual receive width uh, and basically cut the ends off it, make it bigger or smaller. Um, and we uh, also have IF shifting. Uh, this, is, this is one of my favorites because I can shift the intermediate signal over in one direction or another to pull out a signal that's being stuck behind a strong signal next to it. I've got a video on that that demonstrates that. The notch filter. Uh, allowing me to notch out certain noises, sometimes uh, electrical noises or uh, uh, RM, uh, QRM, those kind of things. And of course, uh, digital sound processing or uh, digital noise reduction, as uh, Yesu so affectionately calls it. Um, anyway, let's start with roofing filters. And, um, you know, this filter is usually found, uh, you know, uh, right after the antenna. And it basically is designed to chop off the ends, in other words, tighten up the area of interest that you're listening to. Um, again, it's going to limit the passband at the IF stage. Um, the ones that are typically available are 600 hertz, uh, 3 kilohertz, uh, 6 kilohertz, 15 kilohertz, and also my Yesus have an auto setting that based on what I'm trying to listen to or based on what I'm set to, like if I'm set to phone or whatever, it's going to put out a 3 kilohertz uh, uh, roofing filter. If I'm over on uh, CW, it's going to make a 600 hertz roofing filter. And on and on. AM, I'm going to be at 6 kilohertz. Uh, FM, I'm going to be at 15 kilohertz. But I, of course, can override this if I'm trying to get rid of some noise on the side. What about the amps, right? Well, the preamps are used to boost received signals, okay? And it, they're Typically used on the shorter bands, typically 40, 80, 60, uh, you're not going to turn on the preamp. And um, they're typically located right after the antenna. So you're basically boosting uh, the signal coming in from the antenna. The problem is, you know what? They increase both the signal and the noise floor. So basically all you're doing is you're changing the S meter reading, right, to something that's higher. Um, many hams consider them useless. Um, I don't completely feel that way. Uh, although, you know, uh, if, uh, uh, if you really want the person you're listening to to get a boost, you know, you can put on the second preamp and basically tell them that they're coming in uh, S9 plus 10, um, when they're only coming in at about an S7 without the amps. Anyway, then of course, attenuation filters, opposite of a preamp, yeah, uh, reduces the signal into the radio period, and it's used to reduce overwhelming signals. I have an amateur radio operator that lives probably about a half mile away from me that runs 1,500 watts, 
uh, into a Yagi. And uh, every once in a while during a contest, he'll swing his uh, beam over and it'll be kind of pointing right down my throat. And uh, he'll basically just destroy my front end. I, I can't hear anything when he keys. And it, he also will uh, cause my SDR to basically reset because it gets overloaded. So uh, that is one of the main reasons that I've used the attenuation filters. And again, it's just designed to pull down just you know horrendous transmission uh, reception from something that's very local or something that's aimed right at you. Uh, auto gain control. So this is both the friend and the enemy of the amateur radio operator. If you're, if you're using uh, auto gain control, uh, while you are using digital modes, it can really sometimes be a problem. Uh, many digital modes recommend turning it off or, or at minimum set it to low. And basically it has a high, medium, low and auto setting and of course off. So what it does is its goal is to keep the audio level the same. As, uh, as you well know, when you're operating on HF, sometimes the audio level will go way, way down on the person that's transmitting due to certain atmospheric issues. What this does is it tries to adjust that level up to keep it consistent. The problem you have with digital is that if you're adjusting the audio level, you might be overdriving something. So you really, on the digital stuff, you seriously don't want it to make changes. Uh, but it comes in very handy when you're working phone. Uh, it really does. And uh, uh, I usually select auto. Uh, you know, again, if, uh, if you're having a lot of drops and things like that, and you're not really getting the reaction, set it to high. Uh, you know, I think medium's the default for phone on auto. That being said, and of course, RF gain volume, and th this is really a confusing thing to new hymns, right? Because you've got your AF volume, which is your audio frequency volume, which, you know, you, you turn up and it makes things louder and quieter. Your RF gain is more along the lines of um, almost like a squelch. So in other words, you, you turn it down to get a higher requirement of signal to be able to listen to. It's really good if there's a lot of really nasty noise and you're, you're hearing somebody, but the noise is really nasty. You can turn that knob down and it'll allow you to uh, pull in that other, uh, what the signal of interest without listening to all that other noise. Although if you leave it in that position, you could be blocking out other people as well. Um, and, of course, our favorite, right, RF width, and there's typically two basic settings, narrow and wide, and it's usually adjustable with a knob as well. My radio can range from 200 hertz all the way to 4,000 kilohertz, or, uh, or excuse me, 4 kilohertz or 4,000 hertz. Um, I got the uh, oh, uh, slide one there. Um, and... It can greatly improve your reception on a busy band. It also is an excellent tool if you're doing digital and you're trying to center in on a particular signal. Uh, and we'll show some of that in a demo video as well. Um, and then, of course, you know, IF shift is one of my favorites because it's great to pull out one of two overlapping signals. Very powerful filter. I mean, um, when you're using it with width, it's a especially powerful because you can chop the ends off of a signal and then you can shift it over so it really is only uh, the IF is slightly off and it's only grabbing a certain portion of that upper sideband or lower sideband allowing you to better hear your signal of interest. Uh, never ever ever use it with digital modes. It will do nothing but make it so you can't decode. And sometimes it's kind of hard to locate on a radio. I, I've got uh, uh, a uh, FT-857, and it's buried like 18, uh, uh, 18 menus deep to get to it. Um, and my 857, by the way, doesn't even have a width uh, filter. So, yeah, it's uh, depending on your radio, all these filters may not be available. Uh, but 
the important part really is to play with them. And the notch filter, oh yeah, I love the notch filter. The name really says it all. If you've ever been trying to listen to something and you have this tone that is just burning up the center of it, you can notch out that one little tone, just cut it right out where you don't have to listen to it anymore. Um, and it's really good with digital. Let's say you're running uh, FT8 and you just have a neighbor that's just overwhelming when he's transmitting CQ, where it just basically kind of washes everybody else out. You can just notch his signal where you don't have to listen to him and you all of a sudden will be able to see and decode the additional messages. Now a lot of people say that you know uh, you don't have to notch out because even if you're being overwhelmed uh, you'll still decode the other signals. I have found that uh, it's easier and better if I notch. I have a better idea of uh, what's out there and I get cleaner reception on the uh, particular uh, digital uh, connection that I have and basically of interest to me. Anyway, and of course the noise blanker. I have never actually had to use the noise blanker. Uh, it's usually used in mobile applications and it's, you know, if you have a noisy alternator or maybe a bad spark plug wire, supposedly it can uh, cancel out that particular range of frequencies. Um, and uh, if you have noise, you know, turn it on and see if it helps. Um, it's either going to work or it doesn't. Typically it's not adjustable. So, um, and it, again, this is another great one. Not all radios have this, though. Um, DNR is what the terminology is on uh, Yesu, and it's digital noise reduction, but it's based on DSP, which is basically taking um, and uh, modifying the actual audio um, uh, signal, right, that you're receiving in order to cut out additional noises on either side of that particular audio frequency that you're interested in. Uh, you can, of course, use this. Uh, a lot of times they sell speakers with DSP built into them, and they typically have an adjustment or something on the top to vary it. Uh, DNR, I think I've got 15 different DNR settings uh, on uh, my particular radio. You may only have six or seven. Uh, I encourage you to play with it. I usually keep mine on three or four all the time, uh, when I'm using phone. And of course, I always have it off when I'm doing digital. Again, uh, there are certain filters that we can use with digital, but there's others that we shouldn't. This is one of the ones that we shouldn't. Anyway, I'm at questions, but before I go to the questions, let me do this. I'm going to go ahead and show a couple demonstrations here. Um, let's see. Um, let me show the width demo here. Let me see if I can get this up and there, and I'm going to go ahead and flip this on. Now what I'm doing here is, um, oh, as my brain goes dead, this is, um, RTTY and if you notice, up centered at about uh, 2,000 uh, hertz or 2,000 hertz there is a very, very loud signal, okay, uh, that is basically washing out other signals. And now what I'm going to do is I'm now centered on a frequency of interest. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my width in order to reverse my width or narrow my width so I can actually pick up the station. And what we'll see when he transmits here is now over in my decode window there on the left, I'm able to decode him. Anyway, so let's go ahead and drop that. So that is basically width, and that's mostly what I use it for. Uh, now, it can also be used with phone, and it's fairly efficient. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at another one here. Uh, let's take a look at the IF shift. Now, you're going to have to listen to this one. Uh, I actually, you're going to hear me calling CQ. Um, and uh, this is, uh, I had a uh, QSO of interest 
that was right next to another strong uh, transmit signal. And you'll see when I shift how I move it out. So let's go ahead. I'm going to hit share. We'll go ahead and start this. Alpha Golf 6, Alpha Golf. You hear that noise? It's right next to him, so I'm, gonna, I'm reaching for the shift button here. Watch. Now, if, you, if I was talking, let me go back to before I change it. Hear that go away when I turn it? See that? So that's what the IF shift is really, really good for. Now I can hear it really, really well. Now, let's go ahead and look at one more demonstration video here. And this is going to be, where is it? Uh, oh, the contour filter, a much misunderstood filter. The contour filter actually allows you to clean up an audio signal. And let's go ahead and show that. And I want you to listen to the two received signals. The person I'm trying to hear is way overdriven. I mean, just way overdriven. But listen what happens. So you see how that improved? All right. That's what the contour filter did, does. And of course, you adjust the position of the contour filter to take off the highs or the lows or whatever is messing with your receive, where the audio just is just, just almost unrecognizable. Uh, anyway, with that, let's do this. Uh, was there anything else I wanted to show you? Uh, no, not for now. Not for now. So I am going to go ahead and stop sharing. And let me, uh, let me close some stuff up here. All right. Let me close this up. All right. So with all that, are there... Yeah. I've got one. If you lack a contour filter, nice button like that, would you just hit the attenuator for something that badly overdriven? The, no, the problem is actually the audio. It isn't necessarily the signal. In other words, he's got so much compression on his voice that he's transmitting with that it is really heavily affecting what you're hearing. The contour filter, basically, it's kind of like a notch filter, only just at the very top of the signal. So as you move, you change the contour of the pattern, right, as you're receiving it. And um, when I actually figured out how to use that filter, I was in heaven, literally. Anyway, any other questions? Wow. Okay. Then uh, can I throw something in for just a moment? Oh, please. I would suggest if you haven't really played with all of these knobs and controls that much, is to fire up WSJTX and tune it first off on one of the popular bands, especially a really busy one, and start looking what happens as you change things. Because you'll see the result. And you can really see what you can do with noise floors and noise management by tuning off of one of the FTD or FT8 frequencies so that you're just looking at the noise. And WSJTX has a couple of these built in that are really extreme versions of like the notch filters and the uh, uh, width filter. There's one that just says filter that will cut your width down to, oh, I think 150 hertz. Does that sound right? I think the lowest is uh, that you can get to, at least on my radio, is 600 hertz. But there's also I mean, filters. I mean within the software, WSJT. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. So it just stops decoding everything outside of that window. It's not right. really a filter. It just, 
Right. Has the effect of one. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like Pat has his hand raised. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, uh, my AGC is fast, slow, mid. How does that correspond to the high, low and uh, that you were talking about, you know? Well, fast, slow, mid. Yeah, exactly. Same thing. Uh, fast would be high. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And really, just the fast, slow, mid is how quickly it reacts. So in other words, if there's a, that's why with digital, if you the the highest you want it is slow. So it doesn't react very fast. It takes a while for it to make a change. Um, but uh, yeah, from that standpoint, exactly. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Well, all right. Either I bored everyone or I was very uh, concise. So, one of the two. Caroline Brinkley, sorry. <laughs> I got a question. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Um, I have the TS480 Kenwood. Yeah. And it's got, you know, it's kind of uh, one of its things. They started throwing in all the uh, DSP type filters in this radio. Mm hmm. And I, I find they work really good, but it, it has some just very, like, abstract, you know, it's not really a certain shape filter. It's, they're like smart filters. Yes, and, exactly. And you kind of, it's almost like you're adjusting the algorithm to be more aggressive or less aggressive. And, and for that, you know, I, I, I don't like to use them too much because they tend to garble up things. There's like too much processing, but um, sometimes they work really good. So, well, uh, I want to get your comments on that. And then I, I wanted to throw out I do I do use the um, it's not really a noise blanker. They call it a DNL, a digital noise limiter. And the DNL, it's I think what it tries to do is it tries to synchronize with a periodic glitch coming in and kind of sense that and then it tries to be smart and filter it out. They're more like an audio filters though. They're not so much IF or RF filters. Well, yeah, I want to get your comments on the DSP kind of stuff from the early Kenwood days. Well, DSP, you know, I, I, I have to tell you, Keith could probably go six hours on DSP. He, uh, he knows more about that. Uh, you know, he's forgotten more than I have ever known about DSP. The, the, rea yeah. <laughs> the reality is uh, that uh, in, Yesu, in the Yesu world, which I know more about than uh, you know, the Kenwood, uh, you're right. It's like 15 different choices, and they all do something different. And, yeah. you know... Um, so it's not like zero and then you go one and it's one thing and two and it's a little more and three it's a little more. And four. No, no, no. That's not the way it works. I will tell you that um, if you're messing with other things like width or shift or uh, contour or things like that, DSP doesn't work very well in conjunction with those other filters because it messes with the algorithm's head, right? Um, and that is truly just an audio filter. And the other, uh, the other one you were talking about uh, that I didn't actually mention because really what it is is it is an intelligent noise blanker. And it's designed to get rid of um, man-made noise that would typically be at a, you know, basic interval. Where when you look at a noise blanker, it is just looking at blanking known problems that it already knows about. Yeah. Yeah, it, the, the radio also does have a, just a great, you know, if you don't, the, the, the DSP or the brain thing, they just call it noise reduction. That's something to play with, but it also has a very nice, very flexible, um, just filter, audio filter, and you can move it around, set the widths, set the angles, and it just, you know, just like a parametric equalizer kind of thing. Right. I think it can even do a, a 
a, um, a notch in the audio that you can slide in there. It's pretty flexible. They've, they've done a lot with it, but I, it's just not, uh, it's not easily accessible. It's probably the biggest thing, like why I don't play with it too much because, um, it's in a menu. So you got to kind of go to the menu and then just that parameter and, and um, it's yeah it, it, and then you know with the ham radio audio bandwidth you're not it's not that critical most of the time you kind of find a setting that's kind of works for different cases so yeah that's been my experience well i you know what i will tell you is this i have uh, uh, a ft991 which is, was a replacement radio for the 897 yesu and i also have a yesu ft dx3000 okay the FT991 is a jack of all trades. It's an all band, all mode radio. Uh, it's okay getting to the filters. If you know where they are, you know it's got the push, uh, the LED push, you know, so you got to push it and select the menu item and make this multi knob work for this and that and all that. Where the 3000. Almost all the filters are available as a dedicated knob and a dedicated button, okay? Now, um, price-wise, believe it or not, uh, the 3000 on a, on sale was about the cost of retail on the 991. And But the nice part about the 991 is it's small. You can throw it uh, easily in the back of the car. It's not that heavy. Uh, so it's and it's a great radio. It's also got VHF and UHF. It is a shack in a box. But again, you know, a lot of the filters are difficult to get to. Um, you know, so uh, I've learned using that radio, Ryan HF, how to get to those filters when I need them. But I'm certainly that it certainly isn't as easy or as fast uh, as doing it on the 3000 where I have dedicated knobs. Any other questions? All right. Well, guys, it's been fun. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, I'll uh, hopefully get to a position to edit this soon. Well, all right, that was it. Some really great questions and comments from folks that were in the audience on that one. I want to thank everybody for uh, uh, that was at that talk for participating. Uh, and uh, my goodness, that's all I got. Um, any questions or comments, make them down below. Don't forget to subscribe. And with that, again, thanks to Dennis. That was Dennis, November 9, X-Ray, Foxtrot, X-Ray, for getting me off my uh, you-know-what to get this edited and uh, get it in the can. Thanks much. This is AG6AG saying 73, and I'm hoping to hear you out there on the air.